Hey everybody, over the next few videos, we're gonna be taking a look at Flexbox and CSS. Now Flexbox is short for the flexible box model. And essentially what it is, is a way to very efficiently and quickly position and order, stretch and shrink and align child elements within a parent container element. So I think the best place to start would be by taking a look at the container element versus the child elements and seeing how that relationship works. All right, so we're gonna start off here with an example, which will serve to illustrate this idea of a parent element in relationship to its child elements when we're dealing with Flexbox. So here on the bottom half of the screen, I have VS Code. On the left side is my index.html file, as you can see with some boilerplate HTML. On line six, I'm linking to my style sheet called styles.css, which is here on the bottom right half of the screen. Now the markup for my HTML is very simple. I just have a parent div with a class of parent, and nested inside of that parent div, I have three divs, each with a class of child. So you can see we're setting up this relationship of an outer parent div to three inner child divs. And if we look in the browser window here on the top, we can see that containing div, the containing parent div, represented here with this gray background. And nested inside of it are the three child divs, each represented here with a blue box. Now the CSS that I have set up so far is just simply to set up these boxes and these background colors. No Flexbox just yet. So by default, when we set up divs like this, each one has a display value of block. Now since we want to work with Flexbox, what we need to do is give the outer containing div a display of flex. And what that's going to do is it's going to open up all these flex properties that we're going to have access to. It's going to enable us to do things like very quickly position these child elements in different ways to align them in different ways, to stretch and shrink them and order them in different ways. So all we have to do is on the parent containing element, here in this rule for the parent class, is come in here and give a display value of flex. Now let's save and take a look in the browser here. And you can see that the child elements have now rearranged themselves. They've gone into this kind of row formation. And we're gonna find out all about that shortly. But the main point of this is simply to say that Flexbox is always working with parent-child relationships in which the parent containing element has a display value of flex. Once we enable display flex, the enclosing parent container we can now refer to as a flex container. And the child elements inside of that flex container can now be referred to as flex items. And as we're gonna see, we're gonna be able to apply different flex properties depending on whether an element is a container or an item. And one of the things that's important to point out, and that could actually kind of trip you up when you're working on a complex project, is that the child elements need to be direct children of the parent. So even if this outer parent div has a display of flex, if we were to nest these child elements in another div, like this, and now we saved, we would see that all the elements go back to display block because these child elements are no longer direct children of the parent containing element that has the display of flex. In practical usage, when we're developing a site, we're probably gonna make use of various flex containers with their corresponding flex items in different spots on the page or the site. So for example, here I am on gatsbyjs.org. And if we look here in the top left of the screen, we can see this nav menu here. And this area that I'm highlighting could be a flex container and the individual elements within could be the flex items. And then if I look further down the site, if I look at like this little area, for example, I see a row with three different little areas, CMS, Markdown, and Data. This row could be a flex container and each one of these three could be flex items in that container. And if we scroll down a little bit further, I see these cards here. There are six of them right here. Well, this whole area could be a flex container and each one of the cards could be a flex item. So when we're thinking about Flexbox and we're thinking about parent-child relationships, we're not necessarily looking at the entire page as a container, although we could, but often we're looking at different spots or areas on the site that are themselves flex containers with their own flex items. Now, one other detail to mention here is that in addition to a display of flex, we can also have a display of inline flex. And let me demonstrate what the difference is. So first of all, let's just get rid of this other div that we created. And now if we save, 
we can see that we're back to that parent div with the display of flex working. Now let's say that I was to come and take this entire parent div with the display of flex and to copy it. So now we would have two elements with a display of flex. And let me go ahead and save. And in order to see this, I'm going to have to expand the browser a little bit. And actually, let me give them a margin bottom of 10 pixels just so we can see the separation between them. And what you can see is that the parent divs with the display of flex in the document flow arrange themselves as block elements. And that's why when we copy that parent div, we see it here on a new line because that's how block level elements behave. So even though internally the child elements exist in a flex context, the enclosing parent div is itself laid out like a block level element. However, as an alternative to display flex, we could do display of inline flex. Let me go ahead and save. And what do you think is going to happen? Well, as you can see, they've now lined up inline. Each one is no longer behaving like a block level element, but rather they're lining up inline horizontally. So I just wanted to point out that you do have the possibility to set an inline flex value for a flex parent, and now you know what the difference is.